Hi, I'm Ian Anderson, an Apple Certified Trader. For many workflows, shooting with multiple cameras is a great way to make editing easier and to reduce the time you need to spend shooting. If you can sync all your shots to the same audio, you can reshoot with the same cameras to finish up with double the number of angles to work with. Final Cut Pro's multi-clip editing feature can help to manage the process if you only want to show a single clip at once. However, if you want to create a split screen effect, it gets messy quickly. CoreMelt's ImageFlow plugin set offers many ways to display multiple clips at once in simple and complex arrangements. In this tutorial, we'll sync up several clips shot in two different takes with Pluralize, then use ImageFlow to show many of these synced clips at the same time. Without Pluralize, you'd have to sync these clips manually, which can be time consuming. If there's no obvious visual or audio cue across all the clips, it can be quite difficult to get it right. First, for speed and compatibility, you'll want to make sure that all of your clips are the same frame size, at the same frame rate, and in the same codec. I've conformed all of these clips to ProRes 422 720p25. To use Pluralize, you need to edit each of your source clips into a separate track in a Final Cut Pro sequence, then call the sequence Pluralize. Don't delete the audio, as that's what Pluralize uses to perform its syncing. Launch the Pluralize application and press Sync. It will prepare the media for syncing, then create a few new things. First, you'll have a new sequence, labelled in green, with your tracks moved into sync. You'll also have a new multi-clip, which could be useful if you need to incorporate some full-frame footage later. For now, we're interested in the synced sequence. Select the entire sequence, right-click, choose Send to Motion, then save the Motion project file next to your Final Cut project file. I should mention that you can avoid motion if you wish by using nesting within Final Cut Pro, but most users will prefer this workflow. In Motion, open the Layers panel with Command 4, and you'll see a group for each track in the original sequence. Any gaps at the beginning or end, or even in the middle, will just be blank within each group. If you wish, you can rename the groups to better reflect the names of the camera angles. We want to hide the groups, because we don't need to see them for the next stage. In Audio tab, we'll solo just one audio track, so we can check on the sync. Soloing means that all other tracks are muted, and it's a lot quicker than turning all the other tracks off. Now, we'll add an image flow generator to a new group above everything else. Open Library, Generators, C2 Image Flow, Instant Montages, and pick one of the generators there. A few of these are free, even after the trial expires, but we'll take a look at Video Wall Zoom. Drag the generator to the very top of the Layers panel, just above all of the other groups. Release the mouse to create a new group containing this generator. Now choose the Inspector, then change the From setting from Folder to Image Wells. You'll see four image wells appear. Now change the number of image wells to match the number of source clips you have. I've got six groups to use, so I'll set this to six. All you need to do now is to drag each of the existing groups into the image wells. It doesn't really matter which order you drag them, and don't worry if the previews look blank. If the group is blank at its start, you won't see a preview thumbnail. You can now scrub through the timeline and tweak the settings to suit. For this clip, I'm going to decrease the time that each image is shown for, and make sure I have the same number of clips horizontally and vertically. There are many options here, allowing you to increase the scaling, control how many blank areas there are in the video wall, and to use a mask or a frame around each clip. Let's save and close and return to Final Cut Pro. Scrub through the timeline and you'll see this all works quite well. The multiple angles are all shown simultaneously, and to change the effect, just right-click and open an editor. But what if you wanted to cut or transition to a different image flow generator? That's easy. 
we'll save as with a different name. We'll deactivate the original image flow generator and choose another, dragging it in as before. This time, we'll use falling cards. Choose image wells, change the number of image wells as needed and drag the groups in, just as we did before. Now, tweak the settings as you wish. I'm going to increase the scaling, increase the length of time each image is visible for, and turn spinning off so you can see the video more clearly. Save the motion file and close it. From the Finder, drag this new file back into Final Cut Pro, into our current project. Now we'll add this on a track above the other motion project. Now press B to select the razor blade tool and cut through both clips where we want to transition. Select and delete the first part of the clip on V2 and the second part of the clip on V1. Now move the clip on V2 back down to V1, holding shift to keep it in sync. Now that they're together on video track V1, to move the edit point, just press R and use the Roll tool. You can repeat this process to use other generators. Another image flow effect you might like to look at is Layers to Camera, in which the clips each fly in 3D space. You can control the camera position in 3D space and also the depth of field, making it quite flexible. There are many more image flow generators to play with, so please experiment with them and show us on our forum here on Creative Cow. If you don't have it already, there's a 15 day trial version of Cormelt Complete available from cormelt.com. Thanks for watching.